really interesting the um, the way I mean now that you mentioned that it was based on a on a true story um, it kind of um, I think illustrates how money comes and goes so quickly and how the circumstances of that situation also was kind of a metaphor for how you know typical it is when somebody who doesn't have money gets a lot of money and then the money's gone very quickly because they haven't really, I mean, I think that it's really common for people to think about all the typical things that we dream about, right? Um, that I think society tells us that in order to be successful, these are the things that you have to have in place. But there are so many things that we could do with, with that resource that we don't think about. Um, that you know wouldn't fit in that sort of cookie cutter type of ideal um but anyway i'm kind of mumbling a little bit but i was i was just kind of fascinated by that you know by kind of how it sort of yeah of course that's gonna happen you know like one second you have it the next second it's gone you know easy so come, easy come. right and there was a gentleman in the audience last night who came up to me and said that he is a bankruptcy lawyer and he sees money issues 
having people all the time, and he's also very aware of, well, because of the bankruptcy thing, people who win money without earning it. Just kind of what you were saying, don't have a sense of the real worth, and they blow through it. And we hear about this all the time with people who win the lottery, and a year or two later, it's gone. They're destitute. He even brought up basketball players who get paid millions, and then as soon as they retire, a lot of them, he's dealt with them, and end up bankrupt or destitute or whatever. I'm not saying they don't at least play for their money, but um, you know, it's getting those big amounts of money. So it, it might be interesting to see this couple 10 years down the road, but um, I think I, I've said what I need to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go back to the comment that you made in the second row about the, the energy and the, the, the energy that these two actors have together. I, I really want to give a shout out to the actors. When I was casting for the show, I had a lot of different options. Uh, for especially for the women, but even for the guys, and these two got cast because the dialogue was so real, and I just had this innate sense that their energy together was going to be as true as the dialogue was. So I want to give a big shout out to the actors because they really. Are. was basing their, their future success on things that were kind of ephemeral. In other words, um, energy, you know, nothing that was concrete. And um, po the possibility of winning the lottery rather than looking at the possibility of a, of a different job or something that would, would, be, would bring them um, maybe concrete success. Good observation. Good observation. And as a director, I, I played with that a little bit. You know, I gave uh, Natalie, the, Chrissy, the, the sort of the assignment to see herself as heir. I wanted her to be ephemeral. So you noticed all of her movements were very up in the air and, and, and breezy and light because there is that ephemeral quality about her personality. Whereas Jack is more grounded. You know, I mean, he might like to do all these things and might not be very practical, but he, you know, is the one who at the end actually talks about why he's not going to have his job and what he do. So, you know, it's, it's really interesting as a director to be able to take that, that kind of imagery and that suggestion mm -hmm. and play with how that actually plays out on the stage. And the other way to look at Jack, which we've also talked about, is he's the one that's kind of stuck he, he did have dreams, um, but he got caught up, as so many of us do, in what we should do as adults once we leave high school and we leave our dreams behind and we work jobs. And she kept trying to get him to think back to what he, it was he wanted to do. So. We're not really sure where this is going for the tour. But that is what I wanted. I wanted to leave the ending kind of ambiguous. Um, and I used the image of if this play was a vase, by the time it's over, maybe there's a slight crack in the surface of the vase. Not sure what that means. Don't know what that means down the road for this couple, but feel free to fill in. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Um, I, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I, I loved the writing, and, and the characters were very whole characters. Um, it was just very well done. Mm -hmm. I'll buy you a drink later. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just want to say, we didn't have a lot of tickets when we were in high school. So, 
obviously it's not a bad error. But he, he picked up very well what happens to people who think they won the lottery. It, it seems like they go through that same scenario. Let's go to Hawaii. Let's buy a car. Let's do this. Let's do that. They're going to counting the blessings of them, putting the cars before the horse before they really know what they have. And it, it almost sounds cliche, but that's, that's exactly what happens. Thank you. Thank you. And it keeps happening. Yeah, um, probably because I, I mean, my hearing's not the greatest and I miss a few lines. But the mechanism by which they discovered they won the lottery was a little unclear to me. Like they're going into the other in the bathroom or what's, that, I was a little confused. Well, it's, there's a line that where uh, when he comes out and says that they won and then she says, um, I'm gonna go check these numbers on the computer. So presumably in the bedroom somewhere in the kitchen, there's a computer, and so she leaves. First, he goes out to check the numbers, and then she goes out to double check. You can check the results of the, the drawing online. Right. 